In this lesson, we're going to be learning about linear inequalities. And this example right here is an example of a linear inequality because it has x that's raised to the power of 1. That's the highest degree of x, and that implies that it's linear. And it's an inequality because instead of having an equal sign, we have a sign that looks like this. And this is not the only sign that you're going to be seeing when we're talking about inequalities. You can see um, this sign, you can see a sign that looks like this, or we can have signs that look like this. And what this basically means is that instead of having a single value for x or some definite values for x when we have the equal sign, this is going to imply that we actually have a range of possible values for x. And let's go over this example to see how we can solve linear inequalities and get a better understanding of what these signs actually mean. So this sign in itself is going to imply that whatever is on this side of this sign is less than what's on this side of the sign. And the way I've always been taught to remember whether this sign implies that something is less than or greater than is to think of it as a crocodile's mouth. And the crocodile is going to want to eat the larger side. So the crocodile's mouth is open to this side, meaning that this side is larger than this side. And if we had the opposite sign, if we had a sign like this, then that would imply that this side was larger than this side. But for now, we have this sign. So let's try and solve this inequality. The way that we solve inequalities is actually very similar to the way that you would solve an equation. The way that we want to do that is we want to try get all of our variables to one side and all of our constants to another side. So let's try and rearrange this so that we have our x's on this side and our constants on this side. So we already have a minus 2 x here and if we want to bring this x over to the other side we are just going to have to subtract x from both sides so that's going to get rid of x from this side and remember whatever we do to one side we have to do to another side in order to keep this inequality true so if we're trying to get rid of x on this side we have to subtract x and that means we also have to subtract x from here in order to make this true. So we would do minus 2x minus x because we're bringing this x to this side. It becomes minus x. And now we want to bring our plus 5 to the other side. So to get this 5 out of this side, we can subtract by 5. And we do that to both sides. So we're going to have our inequality, we have our 2 that stays here and we're subtracting 5 because we're moving this 5 to the other side. And now we can simplify both sides. So minus 2x minus x is minus 3x. We have our sign and then 2 minus 5 is equal to minus 3. And now to isolate for x, we're going to divide both sides by minus 3. Now the main difference with inequalities and equations is going to be to remember that when it comes to inequalities, if you're ever dividing or multiplying by a negative number, you need to swap this inequality sign. So because we are dividing by a negative 3, we're dividing by a negative number, we're going to have x, and instead of this sign, we're going to have the opposite sign. We're going to flip the sign since we are dividing by a negative number. And negative 3 divided by negative 3 is equal to 1. So x is greater than 1. And we can draw that out on a number line. So let's say we have our number line here. Let's say this is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, two, three, and four. So what this inequality is saying is that x is going to be greater than one. But remember, it's not equal to one. So these signs imply that it's either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. And that's because we have this extra line right here. That implies that it's going to be either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to instead of just less than or greater than. So here, our x is greater than 1, but it's not going to be equal to 1. So when we're drawing that on a number line, we can draw a circle around our position of 1, but we're not going to color that in because we know that our x can't be equal to 1, but it has to be greater than 1. So that's going to be all of the numbers on the right of this number line 
greater than one, but not exactly equal to one. And there's another way that we can actually write this down, and that is known as interval notation. And in interval notation, we're going to basically describe the interval of values of x. So the way that we would describe this interval is that x can be between 1 and positive infinity, but x is not equal to either of these values. Now in interval notation, when we have these regular brackets here, that's going to imply that it is going to fall between these two numbers but isn't equal to any of these two numbers. Now, let's just say, for example, in this case, instead of having x is greater than 1, we had x is greater than or equal to 1. If we had this instead of this, our interval would look like this. We would have a closed bracket, our 1, and then infinity. And that's because in interval notation, these regular parentheses are going to imply that our value for x falls between these two numbers, but does not equal any of these two numbers. When we have a closed bracket in interval notation, that is going to imply that the value can be equal to that number. So this means that it can be greater than or equal to 1, and to infinity. Let's go over a few more examples to make that extra clear. Let's say you had 12x plus 3 is greater than 2 times x minus 1. So when we have an inequality like this where we have brackets here, the best way that we're going to solve them, similar to how we solve linear equations, is just to expand this out and then solve it like we did the previous example. So we would get 12x plus 3 is greater than 2 times x is 2x, 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. And now we want to move our variable terms to one side and our constant terms to the other. So let's keep our x's on this side. So we have our 12x which stays here. Now we want to move this 2x to this side. So to get rid of the 2x from here and move it here, we're going to have to subtract 2x from both sides. And that's going to cancel out the 2x on this side, and our minus 2x will go here. So we have minus 2x, we have our same sign, and now we have our minus 2, which stays here. And this plus 3, we want to move to the other side. So to cancel out this plus 3 from this side, we subtract by 3, and we have to do that to both sides. So both sides are going to have minus 3. And now we can simplify both of these sides. So 12x minus 2x is equal to 10x. And then we have our greater than sign. And we have minus 2 minus 3 is equal to minus 5. And now to isolate x, we're going to have to divide both sides by 10. So that is going to give us x is greater than negative 5 over 10 and negative 5 over 10, we can just simplify to negative 1 half. That's the same thing. And remember, because in this case we were dividing by a positive number, we didn't have to flip our inequality sign. We have that x is greater than negative 1 half. So how would we write that in interval notation? We know that x is going to comprise our values from negative 1 half to infinity. So we have our regular brackets because it's not greater than or equal to, it's just greater than. So we have negative 1 half to positive infinity and that is interval notation. And we can even draw this out on a number line to get an idea of what it would look like. So let's just draw our number line here and let's say we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and our negative 1 half is going to fall right here. This is our negative 1 half and so what this is saying is that our x is going to be greater than negative 1 half so we can draw our open circle because it's not equal to one half and it's going to be all of these values in the number line that go from greater than negative one half to positive infinity. Let's go over one more example. Let's say we have 4x minus 2 is greater than or equal to x plus 1. So again we're going to want to get all of our variables to one side and all of our constants to another. 
So let's keep our 4x on this side. And now let's move this x to this side of the equation. So to do that, we're going to need to cancel out our x from here by subtracting an x. And we have to do that to both sides. So this becomes 4x minus x because we moved this here. And then we have our greater than or equal to sign. Our 1 is going to remain there. And now we're moving this minus 2 to this side. So it's going to become plus 2. And now we can simplify this. So 4x minus x is equal to 3x greater than or equal to 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And to isolate for x, we're going to need to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So we're going to have x is greater than or equal to 1. And now when we're writing this down in interval notation, we know that our values for x are going to be either greater than or equal to 1, and we'll go until positive infinity. So we can see that this interval notation example is different than what we got in the first example we did when our interval looked like this. We had these regular brackets instead of this closed bracket here. And what this closed bracket is denoting is that our x can actually be equal to one. So it's not just greater than one, like the example where this was our interval. It is greater than or equal to one. So what would that look like on a number line? Let's draw out our number line here. Now this number line is going to look like this. We have our circle around our one, but we can color that in because our x can be greater than or equal to one. And then we're going to shade in all of our values in the number line to the right of one. 